Okay, all right. Whiskey and Kicks, Brocky in the building, unboxing, Joe's in the building. Look, usually we would do the double hand slap right now, but what just happened is that we reviewed a pair of sneakers and we tasted whiskey and I realized I didn't have my sound on. Nada. Bad sound is a taboo when doing internet content. I learned that early in the game yeah. and I refuse to do bad audio. So, what's good, man? <laughs> so, so, look, little known secret, our very first episode, we did twice. We did it twice. <laughs> we did it twice. So, uh, instead of doing it, oh, we're going to do some of this over again. Um, instead of doing it the way we did it the first time, I was like, you know, let's just, just like acknowledge what happened. We'll bring, it, we'll bring the sneaker back up. And then we'll talk about this whiskey we'll in a second. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, we, you know... We, we, we talked about the Stan Smith. Now we had to show it to y'all. And we have to recap what we talked about. Recap what we talked about. <laughs> it's a beautiful... So we're getting involved. Beautiful, beautiful summer shoe. Can't figure out this green-gray mixture here, but it is dope. It seems like it, it might... You know what? It depends on the light, I guess. It Maybe does. it would depend on the light because... Or whatever the moment is because just now I looked at it and was like... When, when I looked at it without looking at the green tab, it looks gray. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if I cover up that green, plays with that it. pulls out the yeah. green more. So, it excuse dope. me. It's got a, it's made of suede, mm -hmm. which, is, which is a nice touch. Um, and then the stand and the Smith are stitched in in cursive. It's stitched in cursive in really the back. Dope. I first saw that when I was in uh, Spain, and this guy has chastised me since. And I will do it again. I just did it in the, in the bad take, and I'll do it right now in the good take. You go to Spain, you find some stances I've never heard of. And then later on, you was like, Clark Kent got these. So the worst Not that I care about, about that, that like that. The worst but... part about it was Clark Kent posted them on his site. And, uh, and I think I sent them to you, and I was like, yo, I saw these in Spain, but they didn't have my size. And you were like, your size? Your size? <laughs> you don't <laughs> wear Adidas, <laughs> see? <laughs> you don't wear Adidas. <laughs> They didn't have my size, so this is, this is that was the second time you did me dirty going overseas. That's the second time you went to France. I went to Paris, and you went to Paris and didn't bring me back a bottle of Martinique rum. And I was like, and you said it. And the, so, in my defense for the Paris trip, what everyone neglected to tell me was that the liquor stores closed on Sunday, and we were leaving on Monday. And so I ran to the liquor store. I saw it, and I was like, "I'll double back." Because I, I swear was, to God, I was waiting for you to finish. Like I said, I know he said I'm gonna double I'll back. Double back because <laughs> I went to just take a walk and get some croissants and something for breakfast. And then I went back and got the girls and Tiff. We all got ready. We went out and we came back. It was late. Went back Sunday. Joint was closed. Mm. Now it's that. That's a wash. So, so you know, I've never tasted that rum. But anyway, you know, we ain't gonna harp on that, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? This is what, this is what brother did. These are tough. Yeah. Going it's... into the spring, um, me and the polo shop would get along perfectly well with this mm -hmm. back tab because mm -hmm. I I'd freak that. They have a wonderful upgrade on these with this memory foam in here. Yeah. Insole. Yeah. And that's nice. Yeah. That's that's you that's know nice. that makes the combination of. The so the uh, the the softness, the cushion in the soles, and that soft leather makes for a wonderful situation yeah, in the summertime. Because these are these are some real butter leather here. This yeah, isn't, man. This isn't a game. Yeah, man. That, a tongue, that tongue, man. that tongue. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's soft. See? Come and, on, man. And and tongue rockage. <laughs> because the former Stan Smiths, um, early on used to have. The Chuck a Timberland effect. All uh, right, which right. Will sever. It will slice your foot off. Yeah. Right at the front <laughs> ankle, right there at that crease. Right where everyone can it'll, see it. It'll cut you. <laughs> where everyone can see it for the public. But these are tough, man. This this is a. Uh, uh, I, I I would I could do a lot of things with this, man. I would chino these out. Chino them out. That's a good idea I would too. Chino these. Polo chino these out. Yeah, Boy, yeah, that's a good they idea. Would think I was going sad. to a tennis convention. <laughs> what are you talking about? Come but, on. But let's talk about it, man. I mean, we talked about it already, but we're gonna talk about it again. This this, this new set, man. I'm feeling real good about it. 
Yeah, you man. You know, you've, uh, we've come a long way, man. It feel real sexy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel the you know softness I mean? of that? Situation. You know what I'm saying? Got the six foot foldable? Holla at me. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all doing the six foot foldables out there? I don't think so. <laughs> This is what happens when you start the show with liquor already inside. Yeah, we're going to get to that, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we're going to talk about it in a second. Talk about yeah, nah, man, this is, um, I like what you did here, man. The, yeah. the simple upgrades, you know, like we said, you had, you posted our very first episode, and, mm-hmm. you know, with the, with, the, with the mini bar you had in the back mm-hmm. at the time, and mm-hmm. how that grew, and then this grew, and now... Yeah. Y'all know. look at that first episode, I look like a child who just got called in and c- come in the house, and it's like the... The lights just came on on the street, and I've been running around all day. Collar looking like it's hanging off my shirt. <laughs> I've been sweating all day. <laughs> the shirt is now a 4XL, started off as the large. <laughs> That's because you, you played a, a solid game of football outside. In chase. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's, it's, nice. it's uh, you know, the little bit of growth, uh, a little bit at a time, man. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? So, here we are, man. I think I think we're going to be doing a good, I, I uh, like, doing a good I, thing. And I shouldn't, but I feel like we, we have to discuss the elephant in the room. What's that? The disrespect um, of the sneaker hoodie combination you well, have I right j- now. I just so happen to take my shoe off under the table to show y'all what commas and sense did for me. You know what I'm saying? They got the... They got the hoodie situation right here. They matched me. I bought these. You know, I, where did I wear these to? I wore these to a sample, to, a sample session. Yeah, 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 yeah. with the um, with the, the Indian Kurda joint, the red joint. We've, 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 we've discussed the disrespect. The Kurda. About them. You know what I mean? Uh, and uh, comes and sense, you know what I'm saying? They freshen me up with this joint. So if you want a shirt, hoodie, or whatever it is, you know, rocked out by comments and sense, they will match whatever colors you want. And they'll put whatever you want on the front of it, too. They will. Because they did a t-shirt for me. Yeah, uh, Commons of Sense, official yeah. whiskey and kick sponsor, man. And then any of y'all liquor companies out there want to be a sponsor, we I can put you right there, baby. I can holler at me. You right there. This is your spot. I'm gonna put it. I should put an arrow on the joint. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, let me grab these and take, throw these off. So, you know, um, we've done the done the bourbon. We've done the the rise, the gins. The mix, the, the the prohibition cocktails, so on and so forth. Yeah. But today I got Joe tasting some Avalor Scotch. Scotch. Um, one hundred and nineteen point eight proof. Um, bottled straight from the cask. And matured in Spanish Oloroso sherry butts. So first thing I have to admit is I didn't know that the word was cask. I thought it was cask. Uh, cast. With the tea. Yep. So there's that. Secondly, explain to me the difference between Scotch and bourbon. So since they're both whiskeys, right? Yeah, both are whiskeys. No rye whiskey. You have Canadian whiskey. You have um, Irish whiskey. Right. You have Scotch. You know what I'm saying? You have bourbon. You know, so you have a lot of different types of whiskeys. And bourbon is a whiskey that has to be made in America. Okay. It has the ABCs. Of bourbon, like it has to be in the white oak barrel, you know, it has right. to go in there at a certain percentage, all these kind of things. It's distilled from corn, from corn, not this. Mm-hmm. Uh, bourbon is scotch, has to be made in Scotland. Okay. And it's, um, I believe, is malted. So it's, uh, um, yeah, it's malted. So it is, it's uh, distilled, I think, from um, maybe barley or something like that. Right. I, got, I, got, I have to look that up. I should have. I should look that up, but yeah. um, okay. yeah. So that's that's the differences so that's between the, the two. The main difference is, is where they are made no the I mean, main difference is how they're made how they're made how and where they're made yeah, yeah how and where they're made how they're made is the most important because technically someone here in this in the states can make a whiskey that tastes similar not like this but tastes like a scotch uh, like okay. japanese whiskey resembles right, right, right. scotch big time okay. smokiness you know what i'm saying all those things or whatnot but you can't technically call it a scotch because, because it's not I made mean, in scotland. scotland you can't okay. call a whiskey if you do all those things at the ABCs of bourbon, if you do all those things, and if you add one more step, you can't call that a bourbon. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because you violate any of those, it's a law. It's not okay. a rule, it's a law. Oh, it's a law. Yeah, those are laws, okay. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, right. you know what I mean? You have to be made in Scotland to, be called, to call yourself a Scotch. What okay. you think about it, though, man? So, right off the bat, the, uh, what was it, 119.8? Really, 120. You really think about it? That's a buck. That's a buck twenty. That's a buck um, twenty. So, the first sip showed up. 
no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And when I smell, when we did our smell test, you know, I smelled some honey or something sweet that I really, it really smelled like honey. Mm -hmm. And so when, um, after the first sip, went back for the second sip, and it was a completely different experience. What we didn't do yet is drop the water. Oh, yeah, so let's we'll do, do that, that. man. But before, uh, but before we do that, there was, it was incredibly smooth, the mm -hmm. second sip. Mm -hmm. a, a completely different experience to the very first From the first sip. Yeah, good. You know, you, you get that, and it's not harsh at all. It's but not. But I'm going to use that word. You get the harshness out of the way, the first the sip. Way, right. And after that, you kind of acclimate it. Yeah. Um, last time y'all saw us, I had... A spoon went spoon and a, <laughs> a glass of water, <laughs> so I had to <laughs> upgrade my situation. So let's go ahead and add a drop. I've never done this with this whiskey. Okay. I'll put a drop in for you, bonk, and a drop in mine too, bonk. See how that changes the complexion. Man, this is good whiskey, y'all. I'm is telling good. you. This is pretty good, man. All that's missing is a cigar. Mmm. Yep. It smooths it out even more. Even more smooth the second time around. And that is better with, with a drop of water, in my opinion. Hmm, what you getting? I'm gonna go ahead and drink while you think about it. Exponentially better. <laughs> it's much better with that drop of water in it. Absolutely. Isn't that amazing? And that is, in, <laughs> that is, this is the third time we've done this. That's amazing. And each time, I hold reservation that the last time was a fluke. It the is. A drop of water is a thing, people. It's a thing, man. It's a thing. It changes this whiskey so much. That's really. That's really, really good. It also got sweeter. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like I like the energy. Yeah, I, I love this. That's I crazy. love this, yo. That's good, man. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. All right, what's it? Aber Aberlour. Yeah, yeah. Aber right. Aberlour. Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Um, they job. have a bunch of different kinds or whatever. Yeah. But this one is the Sherry Cat. I went for this one specifically because I loved it when I had it. Um, I think Whiskey Library put me onto this. Man, shout out to Whiskey Library. Those are my guys, man. Yeah. Good dudes. Um, they put me onto this. Too. Because after I drank my water, even my, this, this gotta be, something in this is making this, the sweetness like stick around. Stick around, baby. That doesn't, that hasn't happened before. It's probably, they probably put, those barrels probably stayed in heaven for a few something. months. And then they came back down. And the and aftertaste. Then... So maybe, you know what? That's the sherry thing. Yeah, that's sherry, man. Yeah. Because that's those, because those because barrels had, yeah. At the end, is yeah. still there. Yeah. yeah. Had, had wine in them that's before. Really good. First, then they put, you know, they age them, they create the scotch, and then they put them in those casks. That's whatever. really good. And, and, and boom, finished off in there, and, and it's good money. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, let's man. um let's go ahead and break, and All then right. we'll come back. You know what I'm saying? Talk about your drinks, talk about these drinks, and then um then we'll rap about, about it. All right. All right. All right, baby, let's go. We're right. back, we're back, we're back, we're back. We are back. What you got over here? Well. <laughs> See how he's acting, right, y'all? Uh -huh. <laughs> As we discussed with the first set of stands, mm -hmm. these are courtesy of our, uh, our of our folks, as yeah. DC people normally say, Family. folks, right? Over at a uh, major, these just came out, and uh, I've been waiting for this day <laughs> because look, look at this. They, uh, Jesus Christ! They've been burning a hole in my pocket. Mm, As mm, I've been mm. holding near and dear to the to the standard of not rocking until after it's been uh, talked about, yeah, unboxed properly, flossed properly through the unboxed. through the villagers. So let's discuss. Look it. at this thing, man! These this is nuts. The oh. Air Max, the Nike Air Max One, Chinese New Year. AKA the NYC Chinatown. It's the year of the rat. The year of right? the rat. But they have no rat stuff on them. So uh -huh. these are just basically celebrating Chinatown um, when they do the fireworks and all that oh, other stuff. Oh, yeah. Look at those little bubble things on the inside, yeah. right? That's like the joints they'd be hanging up exactly. and all that. Exactly. Yup. Exactly. And that's in the shape of the Nike sign. 
Well, they got those little, uh, the little lanterns that hold them. Yeah, the lanterns. That's yeah. exactly what, what I was trying to... Look so at this, man. Some, we got a lot in here, man. There's, There's a lot going on. so here. detailed. So, the first thing that's jumped... The first thing that jumped out is this little, like, little pink piece on the front. Mm-hmm. And the and the pink stitching that go all the way around, all the way around, all the way around. because they have like two tone. Is that two the tone other one? Stitching. Right, it's like a pink too, but it's more like a fluorescent type of. So is this is these two? It's these two, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's these, these two, two colors. Are double stitched all the way all around. the way around. Um, what is this? Is this a, a, a new? It's a new buck? Nah, no, nah, it's suede. It's suede. It's that's a suede. suede. Yeah. And then, okay, so you got suede. You have this glittery. I'm looking at my fingers like it's coming off of yeah. my fingers or something, right? It's an iridescent type thing. Oh, this is... You, you went to college? <laughs> <laughs> or is that what whiskey does to you? You does. know what I'm saying? Like, it's... This thing in the holiday. <laughs> right. Um, yo, it's crazy. Yeah. It does... It depends on the angle completely. And then you have a patent leather here on yeah. the front. And on the back. And on the back with a damn... Is that a uh, what is that? Pegasus. Pegasus? The Pegasus. Pegasus. Which is uh, which is an actual um, See that on in the, the back? Chinese culture. I forget what it's. Got people on camera, supposed man. You to, know what I'm uh, symbolize. I don't know what this says. Oh uh, yeah, something? we gotta find somebody who has that, that tattooed out. on their body. To tell <laughs> us what that says. If you I know what I mean? On their body, it's John. But yeah, <laughs> <what you mean>. <laughs> right. <laughs> this means warrior and strength. Yeah, so the Pegasus, I forgot, I forget what it's supposed to mean, but that's what, that that has a meaning in the Chinese culture. And the tongue um, is a good canvas. Yeah. Something like a good canvas tongue. Yeah. With the, um, like the felty stuff on the inside. The for the, the blue on the inside is, has a felt feeling yep, to it. Yep, yep. You can play pool on that if you want to, you know what I'm saying? The, uh, so the Nike sign. Mm. There's a little funky stitching in there. There's a funky stitch. So you have this stitching around it, mm-hmm. right? And then you have like this clear plastic thing. Yeah. Yellow tint. And, and then, then you have blue in stitching inside of it. From this. You know, it's just, it just, I marvel at this the same way I marvel at whiskey. It's like someone put so much thought in the details. The details, oh, yeah. man. The details. These are crazy, son. And you still. You still haven't seen anybody with them? No. You know, and it's such a good touch that they took the stitching around the the um, the the, um, the midsole, uh-huh. but they didn't put that stitch on the, right on, the on the upper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Keep that black. That's that's a good yeah. look because it, it would have been too much if they did that. Shoestrings, two tone, oh, with the pink on the tips. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. That's Tough. Good. Nice way to match up with the front right there. These are dope. Yeah, man. These are these are tough joints, man. I'm uh, I'm really gonna enjoy these. So you were telling me there were two different pairs, right? Yeah. So there was these are the the like I said these were the NYC the Chinatown um, joints to commemorate Chinatown celebrations. Mm-hmm. But there's an actual um, Chinese New Year pair pair. Of oh, okay. Got from, you. Air, uh, Max ones. Air Max One, and they look completely different. They've got a bunch of different colors on them. Uh, they were really an Asian release. They didn't even release those in, in the, the states. states. So if you got them, you had to get them from third party, like Goat or something like that. Yeah, somebody At most had them, them, obviously, um, stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, these these, these are tough. These are tough, these are, these are tough man. You, you already got you are, you already got something to rock with them. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, stumbled into the polo shop, found me a wonderful uh, red sweatsuit with the black horse mm. to uh, just lay above that. Lay above that. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll go, set that off. Go ahead and stomp on people's necks. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. They did a great job with these. Um, oh, we did, putting... we did point out that the inside of the tongue underneath is is this is the same pinkish, reddish thing. Oh, as around the stripe, as a, as a check. Track. So and on the shoestrings. The stitching on here is yellow, while that's this... What kind of red is that? What do they call this red? University something. Oh, and this and this right here, the toe box. Has yeah. a, it's the same on the hill yep. on, on the top of that. It's a toe box. I didn't realize that until just now. So the color combination of stitching and patent leather here is the opposite uh, on the toe. I mean, on the tongue. 
which is it's yellow on that side and this funky color pinkish hue on it. And then they threw what feels like a pig skin around the eyelets on the top, which is a completely different color than anything else on the shoe. That's a completely different this, this is a completely different fabric and color than anything on the shoe. I mean, the tone matches the toe box. It does. And, and, and all, but it's a completely different color than yeah. anything else. On, there's, that didn't show up anywhere else. Nowhere. Except maybe those those things on the inside and whatnot. Yeah, huh. yeah that's like, it feels like a pigskin almost. Yeah. Like a, uh, like a basketball. Yeah. It feels like a basketball material. Interesting. It's like a little rubber so, situation. I like it. These joints are nuts, though. Yeah. Nuts. Yep, that's good work, man. Now you can, uh, you know what I'm saying, make them pay out there. Yeah, 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 it's time. It's time. <laughs> it's time, it's time y'all paid it's up. Long enough. <laughs> all right, all right. I feel some disrespect coming. Now. There's disrespect this coming. Is, this, is, this is confidence. <laughs> There's a confidence in the way you are in this, the silence. There's disrespect what's, coming. What's coming for the next phase. this is happening so let me let me say something i don't know what's in this box no idea i promise you if these are what i think they are we're gonna have a problem um they're not what you think they are you have no okay. clue what these are you have all right zero clue then we'll have a different set of problems so you're gonna have a we whole have other beef. a we'll whole have... we're gonna have beef we're gonna have beef as of uh, who was that who was talking about that? I was watching someone earlier. Uh, beef is when, uh, Jazz though, beef is when you have to stand behind a, a slim tree <laughs> ducking for somebody shooting at you. And that's what, that might be what this, what this leads to. This is still very good, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's beautiful. This is still very, very good. I might Please have continue. another four. So, let me give a back a backstory on these. These dunks, these are SB dunks. They came out in September last year, okay. right? So whatever reason I was I was not able to get them, mm-hmm. and you know I'm like I'll catch them later and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So you came on you came on the show with your um the uh, the rose metallic rose joints. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Donnie came on that that'll be out by the time this comes out with mm-hmm. his metallic um Stan Smith. He's biting. I said you know what man, let me go ahead and and go back and grab these situations. So these are the Nike SB Dunk Humidities. Humidity. All right. Let's talk about these because it's a problem. It's a problem. Feel free to unstring those so you can really explore the studio space with this sneaker. It's, it's a super problem. <laughs> yeah. The fact, the fact that there's a bow right here. It's a red bow in the front. A red bow in the front. Yep. Takes its level of disrespect. I'm going to read about the shoe before we even start getting into it, alright? Is that okay? Or you want to talk about them first? I was going to curse. Just go ahead and read. I was going to curse. So, SB Dunk High Humidity. Nike SB continues celebrating skateboarding's cultural gathering places with the release of Humidity Skate Shops SB Dunk. Commemorating New Orleans Tricentennial. Approaching its 22nd anniversary as New Orleans' oldest skate shop, Humidity is led by owner Philly, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name, who has helped turn it into a communal shop for the passionate NOLA skate scene. Outfitted in a shining metallic gold finish, Philly and the Humidity team wanted to create a shoe that told a story. The premium gold finish emulates a shining brass horn. White trumpet graphics musical notes displayed throughout the translucent sole Further, the celebration of New Orleans musical heritage, a removable bow tie tops the laces while the premium velvet lining nods to the inside of musical carrying cases. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Unmike yourself? Oh, you with a bow on there? Word. Let's removable talk about bow tie. it. I'm just going to wear the disrespect. That's what I'm doing. You got to own it. I'm you gotta, you got to own it. <laughs> Oh, uh, Mick, Mick, did you want some of this? You good? <laughs> yeah, thank you. These, are, these, these are nuts. So let's, I don't even know where to begin on this. Mm. So I knew these existed. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know they existed. Like, I didn't know it was like this, man. Uh, hold on. 
let's just start inside. Yeah. So the the soul, I mean the and the insole has a bunch of trumpets. Yeah. Inside of it. Which again makes sense oh. with the gold. And black strings too. Didn't even know that. That's grimy. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Nike sign is has a little metallic situation going on with it too. Yeah. The in the inside, as it said, is so this is like purple velvet, plush, velvet, like actual plush velvet, <laughs> like your and uncle's your uncle's couch. If this is your uncle's couch. This is your uncle's couch. This is his couch. <laughs> On top of which, it lines the tongue all the way down. Yep, velvet, velvet, nice, very nice tongue. So I'll be ensconced in velvet. <laughs> Who doesn't want to wear velvet all the time? Right. There's a nice little H back there. Yep. For the humidity. On the the back tab for humidity. Yep. Which is written down below. It's also written on the back of the tongue right here. Look at that. Yep. Yep. It's written right right there on the back of the tongue. There's an H right here. Mm -hmm. On the uh, right below at the heel, it has Nike SB written humidity again in. And I went to New Orleans and didn't know there was a humidity sneaker store. It's a, no, it's, it's a not. It's a skate shop. shop. That's why skate you didn't know. Shop. It's That's a skate shop. The the notes underneath really dope. Uh huh. Translucent uh, uh, sole. That's really dope. Yep. That's really dope. So man. white underneath the translucent yeah. thing with the black notes. Yep. It just to makes make it pop. It pop out. Make it Absolutely. pop. Yeah, man. Jesus, dude. I'm really happy about these things. These are tough. Dope. They These did a great tough. job. I like what they did with the Nike with the um, tab. So it still says Nike Bass. I mean SB, SB? or whatever. Um, human. It doesn't say human. It's hard to read it's because it's all gold. Because it's all gold. <laughs> it's all metallic. That's metallic why it's hard gold. To read. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because it still has the Nike, the SB, and whatever is written there. Yeah, man. Again, he all that- gold sold it. Can you hold the so, door? So that the red Nike sign really pops. It pops out. And goes with, with the bow. With the bow. It pops along with the bow. You know what I mean? You know, it's a disrespectful situation, man. Oh, wait a minute. Look at the inside of the tab on the side right there. So I'm going to go ahead and pour some of this I like the way you talking to me, man. Look at the inside of the I like the way you're talking to me, man. Of that, so. You ain't got to talk like that, I'm about though, to pour so. a little bit more scotch right here because that's ridiculous, Gene. That's <sighs> perfect. It's purple velvet on the inside of there. Is that is that I, velvet I gotta, in there? I gotta, I gotta <laughs> unlace that just so we can we can really see that. Two drops for the individuals because we talked about this before mm-hmm. with with dunks. Some people actually wear theirs to flap uh, flaps down. Yep. <laughs> this, Look at that. Look at that. Velvet on the flaps. It's inside velvet on the inside of the flaps. Of the flaps. It's purple velvet on the inside of the flaps. <laughs> this is happening. <laughs> this is a thing. I don't know if I should put this video out because this is technically a song. This is a thing. <laughs> and, and so, again, for, for people who buy dunks, the difference between a regular dunk and the SB and the SB dunk is the cushioning and stuff. The cushioning. The regular regular dunks are like this. This you know, it's like a Jordan, mm-hmm. like a Jordan One. You know what I'm saying? SB dunks have way more cushioning and stuff, and the shoestrings are always the fat joints. The thicker, and then so the tongue is because the tongue it's, is it's all, noticeably it's all thick, thick and thicker. fat. Yeah, yeah. This is no mainly because you're technically supposed skating. to skate in these. Who's skating in these? Someone who's somebody's. Yeah, somebody's <laughs> right, <rude. laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's it. These are sick, man. So they had like a, um, an additional box that came with them. The, I don't, right. I don't have it. Whatever. But you could, when they first came out, you can get this box, like a wooden box. Inside is like velvet on it. It's, yeah, it's crazy, yeah, yeah, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't about to pay extra money just for a box. Yeah. Man, for sure. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm excited about these. That's, man, a, great, that's a great pickup, man. I'm going to have to get a sample session going. That's a great pickup. Great pickup. I'm really excited about it. What you seeing over there? I'm just looking at the notes because it's, it's not just notes. There are... There's just a lot written down here to just mimic different things on a sheet of yeah, music. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. Well yeah. Well done. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a lot of people don't know about the, the heritage and culture down in, in New Orleans and why it is the way that it yeah. is. 
You know what I mean? Because of the liberties that those Africans had down there. Mm -hmm. They weren't as restricted as in other places, so they were able to keep a lot of the culture, which translates into this sneaker. Into this sneaker. <laughs> Musical notes and all those things. That's why New Orleans is the way it is. The way it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, man. Great job, man. Hey, that's hey. A, that's, a, that's a solid pickup. Man. Those black shoestrings, that's, that's mean. That's mean. I, I don't think I would rock them like that, but oh, that gold, that gold is just nuts. Man, that is right. So we going to throw these to the side. We're going to come back and rap about it. We got some topics to discuss. To, uh, yeah, yeah. We're going to put that like bow back on there, son. So tough. You know what I'm saying? Get that bow back on there. Holler at me, y'all. <laughs> y'all see That's me tough. out here. Y'all didn't know about these, did y'all? I know. Hey, Knock it off. <laughs> Knock it off. We're going to come back and rap about it? Let's do it. All right, man. All right, man, we back, man. It's time to rap about it. You know what I mean? This is the the new uh, exciting, controversial segment mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. unboxing where we talk about hip hop because hip hop is the reason why we're here right now. Yeah. Speaking of, before we start, I I was supposed to do some homework. Ugh. A gentleman uh, posted a reply to one of the. Oh to yeah. The, to let's wrap about it. Uh, the last segment on the we YouTube were talking clip about groups, and he asked us why we didn't include Eight Ball and MJG. Yep, yep. Kiss, them kids is dope, man. And he gave me a, a, a album because it was about double albums. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. They out of Memphis, right? They out of Memphis. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't. I was supposed to listen to it. My bad, Playboy. I didn't listen to it um, in time for this this session, and I actually forgot about it until he said. Let's begin right now. He owes you. He owes you uh, two ounces of whiskey. Man. I owe you two ounces of whiskey. <laughs> Let's talk about it. I must give a full recap of said album. I'm gonna listen to it too then, because I actually. Uh, what's that. what's the big the big dude was Eight Ball, right? Eight Ball. And eight MJG Ball was, was a skinny. Dude. Nice. Yeah. I always used to say that back in the day. Eight Ball was nasty on the mic. You know what and I mean? I will say Pause. that at the time, um, back then, I just I wasn't. I, I I couldn't I couldn't get into the southern stuff. Man. Joe has a problem getting past the East Coast hip hop bebop type of situation. I do. It's right. <laughs> um, however, what changed was a few trips to Miami, well before Miami was the thing. So we uh, talking yeah, yeah. early. We talking like ninety eight, ninety nine, yeah, yeah. and seeing a bunch of Memphis dudes out there like blasting music and I'm like okay this may be a thing here mm -hmm. you know and then I and then I understood the you know for lack of better terms the swagger that 8 baller MJG came with sometimes you have to get a feel that's what it is for the music yeah. and what it does how it affects the people who listen to it to really appreciate it and what because the representatives that were where we were of that music were not dope human beings <laughs> No. They didn't make you want to listen I, to I started people. laughing until I realized exactly what and who you were talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's 100% correct. You're watching this right now. You were whack. <laughs> However, <laughs> getting around some thorough people from that area and feeling the vibe of it, it was a different thing. Mm -hmm. So I will make sure to make to uh, to, to listen to that album. And I will too. And uh, I never listened to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I respected them dudes. I liked them yeah. and whatnot. But at the time that they were out, I wasn't as um, well-rounded in my musical journey to, to to listen to that and, and appreciate it. But yeah. we'll get on that. All right, we'll talk about it next time. We'll bring that up. I'm glad you said that. So That I means I got to buy some sneakers so we have another boxing. But go ahead. This is crazy. So I, I want to discuss... Um, I have two topics. But one is a little lighthearted. Okay. Um... I want to discuss the greatest storytellers in hip hop. Mm. In no particular order. All right. You want me to start off with this? So right. we're firing them off. Let's get the obvious out of, the way. out of the way. Slick Rick. Out of the way. Not out of the way. Discussion. In my opinion, the he is the uh what is it, the quintessential Jordan of storytelling. Slick right? Rick is the Jordan of storytelling. He's, okay, so if he is the slick Rick, if slick Rick is the Jordan of storytelling, then Biggie might be the LeBron James of storytelling. Biggie's storytelling was absurd. 
No argument there. No, no, no argument there. And I'm not, for the record, people, I'm not one of those... Biggie's the greatest of all times. Me either. That are alive. Me thing. either. This is strictly about the ability in hip hop to tell a great story. Um, I'm gonna throw someone out here right now. Let's go. Who most people wouldn't bring up, I think. Karis One, the major storyteller. His storytelling is was insane and is insane. Karis One storytelling was was a little different in that it actually felt poetic. Yeah. Yeah. If you think about the song Love's Gonna Get You. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Forget about it. So you can see yourself, you know what I'm saying? You can see Rob in front of the in front of his mom's building selling drugs. So <laughs> you so can see it. Let's, so let's do this. While we're talking about storytellers, because not everybody had a body of work for storytelling. Right. But there were some great stories for songs. And the reason why I bring that up is I take Meek Mill. Mm -hmm. In his um, Dream Chasers, the one and the two where he was telling the story about the kid um, and the stick-up kid and all of that. Yeah. It's a great story. Yeah, yeah. He continued yeah. it on. Yeah. For those, I think, one, two, and three. Yep. Meek Mill is by far a storyteller. But in that situation, in, in the, on those three albums, that story that he continued through, was fantastic. You know who else is a great storyteller or was? Will Smith, Fresh Prince. Absolutely. His storytelling was bananas. Absolutely. Summertime is a story. Yeah. Summertime, especially to everyone from Philadelphia, summertime is so much of a story that it was literally what summertime actually felt like. Yo, that's crazy. In 90, 91, yep. 92. I left in 94. So up until I left, Philly. 94. And then when I came back, it still felt the same. Damn, who else? Um, who else? Nas. Nas, Nas is a, an amazing storyteller. He told stories backwards. Story backwards. <laughs> the man told a story backwards. Shout yeah. out to the game for redoing the rewind. That wasn't joint. easy to do. He, he murdered that. Job. He killed that. Fab. Fab. On the um on what's that album that we love? Pachanga. 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 <laughs> <laughs> one of the greatest stuff. New storyteller. Fab was dope and story. He should do more of that, man. Fab storyteller. Fab storytelling was fantastic. Who else um, you got? I'm, I'm very intrigued by this. And I didn't know about this topic beforehand. So mm -hmm. that's and, and that works out perfectly. I'm ready to look up hip hop storytellers. Well, let me see. Let me We're see what. Let's so, let's say shout out to my man Combat Jack. If it wasn't because of him, I wouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, let's see what the internets have to say. The internets. The internets. <laughs> um, who else? So you've got. Listen, Eminem is a great storyteller. <laughs> Eminem is an amazing storyteller. Eminem is a fantastic story. How many times can you murder your wife and, and mom? Ghostface. <laughs> Ray and Ghost. Ghost, Ghost. Morning Ray. Morning yeah, Ray. Ghost Morning Ray. As a matter of fact, I'll take, I'll actually, I'm going to take Ray out. Ray out. Yeah, take Ray out. Scratch Ray. Ghost stories are fantastic. All right, so I'm going, to, I'm going according to the interwebs right now, seeing what they're saying. Um, I'm not, I don't know nothing. I don't know anything about Mac Dre. They have Eve as a, Eve, okay, Eve she, had, she told some dope stories, but I'm not sure she's a dope storyteller. She's not. So she falls in our, in our special category. I'll call it the Mr. Cheeks category. Mr. Cheeks, Cheeks category. Story, meeting the chick on the train. Renee. Renee. The Renee yeah. thing was Mahogany. Rock, Rock him. him. <laughs> Rock him. Rock him's mahogany. Woo. But great story. Rock him isn't a great story. Teller. Right. That's where I'm going right he's now. In the, he's in our group. Mahogany was a great story. Okay. Too short. You got to get short. Didn't he have a, a drink called something tails? Yeah. Whatever. You know he what I'm saying? Too short was a great storyteller. Snoop. Snoop had a couple Snoop of murdered great it. Snores. Great um, stories. EPMD, all the Jane series. All the Janes. LL never told any stories. Did he? LL told crazy stories. Um, um, Big old butt. Big old butt. Come uh, on, he told stories. Three uh, stories uh, in there. Um, it was on the Mama Said Knock You Out album. LL El told stories constantly. You El just El didn't El recognize them because there was such big El pop El hits. Pop crossovers and they whatnot that he yeah. told he told stories 
constantly. Track uh, Q Tip, Track Call Quest, yeah. told stories all the time. Five? Yeah, five. We put Track Call Quest in our storytelling. Yep. Because they're they're not in the in 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 the in the in the, in the uh, Mr. Cheeks bag. They're no. in the actual storyteller. Yeah. In the slip. So we've got two bags, ladies and gentlemen. Five specifically told he has his own song on every album, pretty much that tells telling a story about. Whatever. So, so we've got the Slick Rick bag and the, um, we've got the Slick Rick bag and the, um, the, the, Mr. uh, the Mr. Cheeks bag. Like Biz Mark. Biz Mark. Biz, uh, he did Biz. nothing but tell stories. However, do we have to asterisk Biz Mark? No, you do not. Wait, wait, wait. No, you do not. Kane was writing those. It doesn't make a difference. Don't make a difference. Biz so wrote, Biz wrote a lot of his... Yeah, you can put Kane in there, but Biz, but Kane when Kane rap, Kane didn't rap he didn't stories rap. like that. He did not. But he was a good storyteller because some of the stuff he did for Biz, but we don't know that Kane did all of Biz all stuff. stuff. And Biz had the ability, to but Biz is Biz, and he didn't write because at times he was lazy, and that's all that's that true. was. So Biz had the ability, and he delivered and whatnot. So, you know, especially according to today's standards, no. And uh, plus, I'm never gonna say anything bad about Biz Martin. You can't. Period. You watch your mouth. Who you else? watch your mouth. Who else? Who? Who? Who's? Because we, we can't stay here forever, so we're gonna wrap this. Yeah, one we're gonna up. wrap this up. But um, it's a very good topic, though. Uh, like, like with the last one, if if we've left out some storytellers, let us know. Put I it like in the comments. In that one over there, because the, the the story she told about the girl getting abused. Yep. Yep. The, that was a that great was a song. Great, that was a great song, man. Black thought. Oh. Black Thought is in the Slick Rick bag. Yeah, he's a storyteller. He's, he's a storyteller. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a, a storyteller. Story and um, Guru. Guru's a great story. The whole Step in the Arena album is, is one long story. <laughs> it's a long, one long story. story. One long story. Mm-hmm. We'll have to put in Royce. Royce got it. Royce is a girl. Royce Very got good. it. So, yeah, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Joe Button is a fan... Fantastic, great storyteller. Storyteller, incredible storyteller. Joe, we'll, 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 he'll become up in another, another topic for another episode. You just, you just made me think of a whole other topic. Joe just Button, Joe great Button. Shout out to Joe Button. Those mood musics were filled forget about with it. Stories. Forget about it. Yeah. Forget about it. So yeah, man. So please comment. Who were the best rap storytellers of all time? Who do we leave, off the, list? Who do we leave who off the list? Off the list? And again, I'm gonna need you Southerners to give me some more. Yeah, cause Ball MJG had some stuff. Um, 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 Three Six Ma- Mafia. I don't they know much about their storytelling. They had a couple of joints. Um, you know what? Project Pat used to tell some really crazy stories. I don't know much about it. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you, yo. I can't Before front. I deny those Southerners. I Even though I love who, sipping on some scissor. People who are fans of Southern hip hop. I need you to chime in on this. Fill in the gaps at the in the comment section for great storytellers that we left off the list. Yep. And I just want to know, Project Pat, by way of future. I'm sorry. I can't end this. I, I, we can't end this without saying. Hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mob D. Oh, forget about it. No, don't ever date a chick from the projects. Are I you kidding me? I fought an entire party by myself <laughs> because... That's when we was in the military, beat. right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of a mob beat. All of my friends were upset with me for not telling them about the scrap. That was on Andrews. It was on Andrews. Yeah. All because of a mob deep story that they were playing at a house party. Isn't it funny that your friends get upset with you about having a confrontation or an actual fight and, and not, not and them not being involved <laughs> not in it? Yeah. <laughs> hilarious. Yo, you don't know how Shaka used to, and I don't want to get too crazy here. Shaka used to listen to the interlude of of Prodigy talking about if how he would shoot you, yeah. how stay in your lane or you will get hurt. He used to listen to that interlude, no beat, just Prodigy talking on repeat. On repeat. In wow. in the car. This it's been a long time, so it's, yeah. In the car with a gun on his lap. <laughs> Driving through DC in the nineties, ladies. And in the nineties. Yes. And willing to prove at any given moment that I'm Shaka from Brooklyn. And I'm in the passenger side at all times. Sometimes holding the gun because he has to actually drive. 
Which he drove like a maniac on top of that. Yeah, he crashed into Khalid. Yo, let me stop. Let's stop. 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 <laughs> Let's stop. We're so, storytelling. Shout out to Project Pat for being responsible through Future for an entire era of rap. Yes. Because when when Future came out with the whole um, Sister, 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 this whole Project Pat right there, and then everybody copied behind yep. it. So. Shoot, shout out to him. All right, man. Yo, that was a good topic, son. Really good Sorry. topic, son. Sorry. Really good. So, my topic um, is based off of a Hot 97 clip that I watched the other day. Okay. And this, this, this my audio is about to, this the battery is getting, this battery's getting killed. Okay. But um, they had a conversation, Ebro and them, about who would be the first ballot Hall of Famers of hip hop if there's a hip hop Hall of Fame. They, I think they said rap, but I'm saying hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop Hall of Fame. Who are the first balloters in hip hop that you can think of? That's not, is really, it, that's not really fair, cause because is there a cap on the is there a cap on the number? Like I learned this the hard way last year with an NAACP thing. When you give too many people awards in your first uh, event, you run out of people to give awards to. Okay. So let's so, talk about the first ballot. Then, then who, if anyone had to argue with you, you would tell them, "You get out of here." There's no way that this these people are not getting in okay. first ballot. First ballot. So if we treat this like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You want to break it down? Seventies, eighties, nineties. Okay, we'll do. That. Pick a few. Because you've got to. There's no. There's no hip hop Hall of Fame without Cool Hurt. Cool Hurt. Red Alert. Um, Mr. Magic. Those mm-hmm. individuals. Um, you've got your Furious Fives. Yep. Yep. Melly Mel. Melly Mel. You've got all of that stuff. Um, and then as you start to, that whole generation, as you start to come this way, the Sugar Hill gang. Uh, do they? You got to. This, I, I mean, I kind of agree, but a lot of controversy about Sugar Hill. The reality is they put out an album, the first album. We know Casanova, uh, um, uh, uh, um, not Castle. Um, ah, I forget his name. That yeah, he wrote the verse. Wrote all this stuff. He said, um, they, they even say his name. Damn, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> right? They spell oh, his name. They said his name in a rap. <laughs> so we we get all of that in there. So yes, um, but you still have to put him in there. So so let's go into the eighties. King, rock him, in there. Karis one. Karis one, in there. Now salt and pepper. Salt and Pepper's in there. Marley Maul's in there. Marley Maul, definitely Marley Maul. Marley Maul is, 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 is in there easily. Schooly D is in first ballot Hall first, of Fame. There's no, there's no, there's no conversation. I'm willing to fight my friend right now, and I will probably lose that Schooly fight. Schooly D goes in. Schooly D goes in. Schooly so, D. He's responsible for an entire generation of gangster rap. Absolutely. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, so the, the 80s? 80s go all the way to 89. So when you when you look on other coasts like Too Short, so in the 80s. NWA came out in the 80s. NWA. NWA is in there. Yeah. NWA. As a group, they're a group. in. Yes. Um, Too Short's in. First in. ballot. First ballot. No no discussion. Um, who else we got in the 80s? Um. So I mean, this is where you start to separate. Ghetto Boys? Was Ghetto Boys in the 80s or in the 90s? They were in the 90s. Okay. They were in the 90s. Um, this is where you start to separate what you like from global, from, from <laughs> wider impact. Right, right, right for because sure. If you, you had to acknowledge some certain have, people. Right, and even still, even the stuff that you like, we could, I could say on this side, Brand Nubians or Grand Puba, but technically... No one knew about them outside of New York. Right. Outside of our side. <laughs> that's it. That's a gr- that's a great point. So reach for the for the for the person has to come into account. Woo! Damn, so that takes some people. We talk the Hall of Fame. I know, like, yo. That takes some people out. Yeah, like I, there are a lot of people who make the All Star. Like game. who? Many people don't make Hall of Fame. Did Hall? Did did I got it made translate across outside of New York? Special Ed? Yeah, I got it made. Yes. Okay. So, so what are we discussing? Are we? That was eighty nine. But, but, special ed had two albums. Because then Biggie had. It's not a matter of that. Not a matter we of don't want to get into right, that. Right. right. So, but nope. I'm, I'm, I'm nope. right. So 
I got it made. The mission, right? Overall in, impact, special ed. Does he get in? He's 89. Does he get in first ballot? He can get in second ballot. He doesn't but get in first ballot. He doesn't get in first he ballot. He doesn't get in first ballot. Because of the fact that he probably didn't go outside outside of New right. York in the, in the he tri-state. He did, though. I mean, you know, because at this point, we're starting to get into the rap city where people had the MTO and TV. True and neat. True and neat. People were able to see other. And so, special ed was a big deal for mm-hmm. a long time. 90s. Let's hit the 90s. <sighs> Uh, let's 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 skim through the night. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. Tri- tri- Wu Tang, Tri Call Quest. Nas, Nas, Nas. Wu Tang, Biggie, Tri Call Quest. It's not even top. Nas list. is actually on the committee for yes. the Hall of Fame. But the thing is, is again, we have to differentiate between. You got a lot of scotch over there, man. I'm just saying. I haven't done. We have to differentiate between the All Star Game and a Hall of Fame. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Because did I mention somebody who 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 mentioned? No, 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 no. Okay. Because what I'm saying is, when we get into the '90s, we got a lot of people in the '90s. Yo, the '80s, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Easily first ballot. Hall of Fame. So yeah, back to the '90s. So okay, all right. So yeah, All Star Game co- compared to the Hall of Fame, two different things. Two different things. Jay, but he's still he's not rapping anymore. Yeah, but Jay, 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 Jay. If if we came out with a Hall of Fame right now, Jay is the first ballot. He's first ballot. Period. But his, but his start was the '90s. So we got. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's '90s. Yeah. Um, he just he gets mentioned that during that time period or whatnot. Yeah. He doesn't get in the Hall of Fame because of what he did in the '90s, even though he could. But today, hmm. '90s. We've got to put E40. E first ballot. First First ballot. ballot. E40 has literally created every piece of slang we did, we pretty much use. E40 is first ballot. E40 is first E40 ballot. is first ballot. Tell me where to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know I was going to do that. I knew it was coming. You know I was going to do that, son. Oh. I love that song. Yo. E40. E40 is first ballot Hall of Famer. He is. I agree with that a thousand percent. Queen Latifah's first ballot Hall of Fame. We didn't say light. MC Light. MC Light. Is MC Light first ballot Hall of Famer? I don't know. That's I don't question. know about that. I don't it's, know. So, so, so. It's, it's, she's my favorite this. female MC of all time. She is, man. For, for me, I have her album over We there. also did not add light to our storytelling. She was very good at storytelling. She was very mad at um Sam. She, she was told was a lot of stories about, about her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Sam was a bad guy. <laughs> He's a bad guy. I, don't, I never met him. Georgia Porgy? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah. First ballot. Is MC Light a first ballot Hall of Famer? Please. I want to know, yeah. I want yes. to get people's opinions on that. Because she's 80s. Shantae. Roxanne Shantae is first Roxanne ballot. Roxanne Shantae is first. She's first ballot. ballot. She's first, She pioneered uh, women in rap. Period. Yes. She. She's. She's it. I mean, there were there were female rappers before her, but she pioneered yes. for women in rap. Yes. Shantae's in, so yeah, uh, <laughs> so it's an interesting topic. I'm curious to know who you guys think are first ballot Hall of Famers. Some people can get in later on, right? So the first There's nothing ballot, wrong with that. So we have to we are going to equate this to the NFL and to the NBA in terms of first ballot. Like your career has got to be, it's your you contribution. Your contribution yep. has got to be that monumental. We're not talking all star games. <laughs> no, because there are a lot anybody of can get in there. There's a lot of people. That Somebody can get hurt. Game. You can get in all star game. One great album and you get an all star game that year, right? That's your that's your breakout year. Boom, and never come back again. Ever. Right. I so, will throw some names out there who are all stars that are not first. first MC Shan is an all star. He MC doesn't get in first ballot. Buckshots, all star, not first ballot, and that hurt me to say. Anyone who went to high school with me, especially in twelfth grade, knows wait a minute, what buckshot? You have to say it properly. Black Moon. Black Moon. So, so here's the question. Oh. No, 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 no. So now I just added one more dynamic because removing buckshot from Black Moon. Does Cube get in with NWA and S Cube? 
Because Q. Yes. He goes in twice. Yeah. Because everything that he everything he's done is hip hop. Friday is hip hop. All of his movie Barbershop is hip hop. But his everything solo is hip hop. After NWA is worthy of Hall of Fame horrendous. status. Hall of Fame easily, status. easily. Yeah, his storytelling and his writing was be- beyond ninety five percent of hip hop through the entire In history. In NBA of terms, Ice Cube is a perennial all star. He's a perennial <laughs> all star. <laughs> yo, Hall of Fame. Yo, listen. On that <laughs> note, on that time. note, yo. Let us know who is first ballot Hall of Famer. First ballot. Hip hop. They have to be their contribution. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the line in the sand is Hall of Fame is different from the All Star game. It's different, man. It's different from the All Star game. So you, we have, we've got to talk about a significant contribution to hip hop. Don't DM me. Don't message me. Comment on the video Comment. on YouTube. Comment on the video. I want to know, and we will we will acknowledge it, and we'll talk about it, yo. You know what I'm saying? So, other than that, man, it's a good time. I won't make the same mistake. <laughs> Joe, he's not gonna choke on the whiskey like he did last time, man. Good looking out, son. Yeah, man. Great time, and uh, we recovered from that uh, no audio situation from yeah, earlier. As usual. As usual, as you know what I mean. And the, the water drop situation really worked out. The scotch is really beautiful, and Got some um, joints. Got some joints, so I'm gonna get some footage of that, some be real, yeah, and um, we'll see y'all next time. Man, we're gonna go out and buy some snakes, unless Ducky Major, y'all want to send us something. We'll talk about them here on the on the set. I know Joe is not really a big fan of that, but we'll talk about some sneakers on the set and break them down. We can always do that. We'll break them down. Holla at us, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? All right, man. Yeah, Whiskey and kicks, Brock. We out, Joe. Yeah. We out. What's going on, everybody? It's Brocky from Whiskey and Kicks. Thanks for tuning in. Hit me up, whiskeyandkicks at gmail.com. Whiskey and Kicks on Facebook. The Whiskey and Kicks Show on Instagram. Whiskeyandkicks.com. Please do not forget, hit the like button, comment, and please subscribe to the channel.